What if Luke Skywalker fought Kylo Ren? In Episode 8, The Last Jedi, we see Luke project a hologram of himself from Arcto to Crate, where he confronts Kylo Ren. He does this to buy time for the Resistance to escape. However, how would things change if he was actually there? Luke walks out of the Old Rebellion's base, at the height of his power. Kylo orders all guns to fire upon that man, but Luke defects the first few with his lightsaber and the force and then dashes to the side. After firing finishes, Luke stands there staring Kylo in the eyes, taunting him and causing Kylo to confront him alone. Now standing opposite one another, this duel may turn the fate of the galaxy. Kylo charges Luke who ducks his first strike then blocks the next with the force and pushes him onto his back. Kylo gets back up and walks slowly towards Luke and strikes his blade in quick concession, all which Luke avoids. Luke tells Ben it's not too late, which only angers Kylo even more. Kylo attempts to grab Luke with the force and is momentarily successful, but Luke quickly destroys the connection. Luke begins pacing towards Ren but waits for him to strike first. However, he catches the handle of his blade mid-air and tells Kylo that he failed him and flips him over his head, crashing him onto the ground, causing his lightsaber to stumble out of his hand. Luke quickly grips Ren with the force and holds a blade to his throat and begins walking backwards towards Kylo's ship. The First Order cannot fire upon them or they will kill Kylo Ren. He attempts to escape, but one swift hit with the blunt of Luke's blade knocks him out. Luke flies the ship over the mountain terrain, evading fire from the First Order to go meet up with the rest of the Resistance. Together, Luke and the rest of the Resistance fly to Resistance Base. Kylo is thrown in jail as Leia, Rey and Luke stand outside, their eyes glued to Ren. Leia mutters Ben's name and asks him to come back to her. Rey tells her that it's no use and that he's given himself to the dark side. No one is ever truly gone and Luke tells the rest of them to leave. Night falls and Kylo is still awake, eyes wide open, his mind flooding with images of his father and his potential power. He sees a light outside of the jail, making its way to the door. He senses something familiar about the presence, something he has sensed in Luke and Leia. The figure walks straight through the closed door. The forced ghost of Anakin Skywalker appears in front of Kylo. Kylo freezes, his idol, his motivation is standing in front of him. Anakin tells Kylo that he's lost and is misguided in the path he is following. Kylo tells Anakin that he's following in his footsteps and seeks to finish what he started, exterminate the Jedi and rule the galaxy. Anakin tells Kylo that that wasn't his wish, but his masters who he was manipulated by. The loss of his dear wife and the pain of losing her caused him to seek out the dark path. He tells Kylo the dark side controlled him as it does Kylo now. He pleads for Ben to break free as he failed to do before it's too late. This is the legacy Anakin is leaving for Ben, to break free of the chains of the dark side and tells him that he will never control it and will always be its slave. Ben mentions his father, whom he killed, but Anakin tells him there is forgiveness in the light and the people around him will see that. He turns around and makes his way to the exit. Ben asks Anakin to stay with them and help them, but tells him that he cannot, as Leia asks him to never show his face in front of her again. With that, Anakin exits the jail and vanishes. The next morning, Rey, Luke and Leia come to see Ben. When they enter, they all look at each other shocked. Luke has his eyes glued to Ben and tells him that he doesn't sense the dark side within him and asks him what happened. Ben tells them how Anakin visited him in the night and showed him the correct path. Leia's eyes go wide. She mutters Anakin, her father's name, under her breath. Ben follows up saying that he showed him his true path within the light and he now wishes to begin that journey. He doesn't know if he can atone for his sins, but wants to try. Luke kneels down and tells Ben he believes in him and does not sense any lies in his words. He tells him it's good to have him back and that in time he will heal and make up for his mistakes. It takes strength to resist the dark side and even more to come back from it. Rey mentions that with Snoke's death and Ben Solo back on their side, that the Sith are no more, but Ben drops his head and tells him that this isn't true. He tells him that through the dark side, he sensed a being of immense power, far beyond his own. He has been calling Ben and he planned to search for him and he's also been casting his presence from Exegol. Luke tells them he searched for Exegol but he could never find a Sith Wayfinder. Kylo tells him that he knows of one on Mustafar where Vader hid it. 
the four of them travel to Mustafar and successfully obtain the Wayfinder. They get back into the Falcon and head back to Resistance Base. The leaders of the Resistance meet to discuss how the First Order is being handled. General Hux has now taken command. Luke speaks to the Resistance and tells them that they have evidence to suggest there is another threat, a powerful dark side user on the planet Exegol who has been calling to them. He along with Rey and Ben will seek out this threat and eliminate it. Leia will stick with the Resistance and continue their fight against General Hux. Mutters begin in the crowd and Finn over the mutters asks Luke who it is and Luke tells him that he has his suspicions but hopes he is wrong. The three of them set out that next day in the Falcon. They travel through the hyperspace route and come out with Exegol in the front window view. Luke stumbles back and grabs his head. He knows exactly who this being is and mutters Sidious's name to the other two. The other two gasp. Ben tells him that this can't be possible, that Vader killed them. Luke was even there. But Luke tells them that the Sith have had a history of an obsession in finding the secret to cheat death. Even Sidious's master was close. He must have figured it out. They land the ship on the planet outside Sidious's lair. They instantly feel cold in the moment they step outside. Luke tells the other two, he's here. As they enter, they hear the infamous cackle of Sidious. He tells Luke that all this time, he thought he had succeeded but once again, the dark side had blinded him. The three ignite their lightsabers, still no Sidious in sight. Sidious tells Ben that he senses Vader within him and if he wants, he can become his new apprentice and be even more powerful than Vader was. They continue to make their way through the fortress, getting closer to Sidious. Sidious's voice continues to echo around the temple. He tells Rey that he knows who she truly is and that he knew her parents. The three Jedi stop. Sidious's voice is as close as ever. He continues by saying that her father was his son and that yes, she is a Palpatine. Rey freezes. She cannot move. He tells her that this is where her power comes from and that he's so happy she has come back to him. He asks her to join him and together their family can be the might of the galaxy. Sidious reveals himself to the Jedi. Rey's still frozen. Luke tells Sidious that he's played a bad move and that he can't defeat the three of him, especially in the state he's in now. Sidious sarcastically mocks Luke and tells him that he wouldn't be so sure now that his granddaughter is on his side. Shocked, Luke and Ben see Rey walking over to Sidious. Sidious tells her that he is happy she has chosen wisely. Rey then tells Sidious that the only reason her father would have sold her is to hide her from him and that he must have other intentions. He doesn't truly want her on his side. Sidious cackles and tells her she is very perceptive and reveals his plan to transfer his essence into her and that once he takes over her body, he will be unstoppable. Rey holds her blade up high in the air ready to strike. Luke shouts no, but Rey brings her blade crashing down onto Sidious, cutting him in half. The three are blinded by a burst of energy from Sidious's body. A smoky aura is coming from the corpse and latches onto Rey, entering her body through her mouth and eyes. Her body collapses and she stands back up. Luke can't believe what has happened and asks what he has done. Rey laughs, but this isn't Rey. Palpatine has successfully taken over Rey's body. He tells Luke that Jedi are too easy to fool. He baited Rey into striking him down, knowing that his essence would latch onto her and take over her body. Palpatine raises Rey's hands and sends force lightning at the remaining two Jedi. Ben is hit forcing him back, but Luke blocks with his saber. Luke dashes to the side and darts towards Sidious as Ben uses force leap towards him. Sidious ignites Rey's blue lightsaber and parries the two incoming strikes from the Jedi. Sidious releases a dark side scream and the three stand together. The tension could be cut with a knife. Luke engages in his force light ability, temporarily blinding Sidious as Ben goes for the finishing blow. However, Sidious is too fast, with one insanely fast strike, removes Ben's hand from his arm, continuing the Skywalker tradition. He screams in agony as Sidious force pushes him back and throws his lightsaber towards him. Luke catches the blade in mid-air and redirects it towards Sidious who backflips over it, catching it in mid-air and engages Luke in close quarter combat. With his free hand, Luke grabs the hilt of Sidious's blade and Sidious kicks him back. However, Luke manipulates the blade with the force and rips the kyber crystal from within, rendering the lightsaber useless. Sidious unleashes another set of lightning at Luke who easily catches it. 
Ben uses the force to hold Sidious in space, with Luke joining him in this, ending Sidious's force lightning and forcing him to the ground. He tells Sidious that it's over and no matter how powerful he is, he isn't a match for two Skywalkers. Luke calls upon the Jedi of the past, with Yoda, Obi-Wan and Anakin's force ghosts appearing around them. Sidious looks around in disbelief. How could the Jedi have this power? The five Jedi reach out with their dominant hand and point it at Sidious, who begins to wriggle in pain. His eyes, ears and mouth all begin to expel light. Rey's body begins to float as Sidious continues to scream. Her body crashes to the ground and she looks up and mutters Luke's name. They have successfully defeated Sidious and cleansed Rey's body of Sidious's essence. The fate of the galaxy has now been decided. With the Sith completely defeated, the First Order would have no backing. They would then discover Sidious's Final Order fleet on Exegol and take command of it, using it against the First Order who would finally be defeated by this. Over time, order in the galaxy would be maintained and the Republic would be restored to its previous glory, with Leia as Chancellor. Luke reinstates his Jedi Academy with Rey and Ben as his students and ventured around the galaxy to obtain more Force users whom he could train. Thanks for watching guys, I feel like most of our what ifs have been in the prequel era, so I'm keen to do more in the original trilogy, so leave me your ideas below and I'll see you next time.